And welcome back to the Cover 3 podcast here on CBS Sports. We've got another special edition of our Around the Clock series with 24-7 Sports. We are so lucky that we have some of the best in the industry all across the country. Today, joining me from 24-7 Sports is Anna Hickey. Absolutely crushes it for uh, 24-7 Sports on the Clemson beat. Anna, before we get started, because I'm going to put 15 minutes on the clock, I want to just, you know, say, how you doing? How, how is everything going? This is a little bit of a time to uh, gather your notes together. You've got camp stuff to keep an eye on. How are you, Anna, doing? I'm good. I, I feel like the dead period has been, I mean, it's been a year. And it feels like a year, so it's pretty exciting. These past few months, I've been writing about a ton of visitors coming to Clemson in June and July. Um, it's just around the corner about a week out now. June 1, it's about to be on. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'm going to put 15 minutes on the clock starting right now. Anna, was it a good spring? Because I don't think it was a bad spring, but with all the players missing time or limited in action, not to mention Fomachon's spring game injury, I don't know if I can definitely say that it was a good spring. I can say it was, I, I mean, I'll preface this by saying we got to see zero spring practices. Mm. So we're going off what Dabo tells us, which as we all know, some of it can be embellished maybe depending on what player he's talking about or what position group. Um, but we also got to talk to Venables and Elliot, the coordinator. I mean, well, yeah, and you can get you know, kind of a lot from what they're saying. Um, so I would say you can say it's a good spring. I don't know if it was a great spring. Like you said, you mentioned – a ton of players were missing. We talked to Venables. He made sure to point out that they had about three fourths guy of their guys miss significant amount of time. Um, but I do think it was good from the standpoint of getting DJ Uyunglele first team reps with some freshman receivers, get that new offensive line. That's probably where the spring was most beneficial is the offensive line was not great last year um, from a starting perspective and then was real was really below average from a reserve perspective just had maybe five guys six guys that they could turn to and I think this spring was so beneficial in bringing some of those younger guys along where they feel significantly better going to summer and fall about the guys that they have along the offensive line and really think that they're going to be able to sub more in the fall and they think that's going to make a huge difference um, specifically in being able to kind of hold up better and run blocking. Why do you think that that is that um, something that's happened on the recruiting trail? And so therefore there's been effort to and address it. Why is the Clemson offensive line? Because it can be a lazy fan narrative too, right? Complaining sure. about the offensive line is just like as basic as yelling at the refs in terms of standing there, like in death Valley, just wanting to be mad. So right. you know, why do you think that that's be become the case recently? I will say the fans media, there's definitely some merit to that. And Sweeney will tell you there's some merit to that. I think all you have to do is turn on the tape from Notre Dame, the first game in South Bend last year. Um, that was just. Travis straight. couldn't run. It was like. He he yeah. It's not about football to kind of see that there was nothing going on there. Um, and we heard repeatedly game after game. It was like, well, this is how teams are defending us. They're loading the box. They're making us run, which was partially true, but partially Clemson just really struggled being able to run, like you said, asked about recruiting, kind of missed, I wouldn't say, well, to put it frankly, they probably took some guys that they shouldn't have necessarily taken. Some of those guys have left the program, but a lot of it was just how they kind of allotted their numbers in different cycles. They had five, six true freshmen last year. And as you know, playing offensive line as a true freshman, I don't care how good you are. That's really, really tough. Um, but now those guys are in their second years and they've had a full spring. They're going to have a full summer doing with the older guys. You know, last year was obviously different with COVID and it's such a developmental position. So I really think the second year, second and third year, that's when you can really judge Clemson's efforts on the recruiting trail, their identification, their development. And some of those guys there last year was a little bit unfair. I do think you can probably criticize how they allotted certain numbers in certain classes. Um, but this year should be a significant step forward. Okay. Uh, you are one of the best in terms of like nuts and bolts and roster management. You know, you get in following these guys uh, during the recruiting process. I feel like you've got a handle on positional stuff. So I do want to have some nuts and bolts, but first one big picture as the program has like leveled up in terms of the, 
the stars uh, or the recruiting rankings. And um, as like that has changed in a, a significant way during this run, has the made up makeup of the locker room changed? Because at its heart, these recruiting classes are still Georgia, Florida, you know, South Carolina, but we've also got like, you know, California coming in. We're also, you know, branching out just a little bit. Has, has it changed at all with, you know, so the OKGs are kind of program guys, but now we've got like, everybody's a blue chip. Everybody thinks that they could go to the league. Has anything changed that you can tell from just sort of the makeup of uh, the Clemson Tigers? Maybe a little bit, but not really, not into a glaring way where you look at their locker room and their culture and think, okay, this is a lot different than how when Dabo Sweeney started out. Maybe the main difference is that these guys come in knowing Clemson's recent history and just expecting to win, like yeah. expecting to win the ACC championship, expecting to go to the playoff, expecting to go to the national championship. That's really the main difference. I still think guys come in, Clemson puts an emphasis on recruiting guys coming in saying, I don't care how good you are. You're going to have to work to earn this. Um, and guys that are for the most part, good additions to the locker room culture and what Dabo Sweeney kind of uh, likes there. Of course, you're going to have a bad apple or, you know, someone that doesn't well, I mean, fit Clemson's in. famously yeah. selective. When you compare them to, Not like, their years, yeah. 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 Um, you look at someone like DJ, California kid, you know, I, I don't know if there's a ton of kids necessarily like him in terms of background on the roster, but from an outsider's point of view, I mean, he fits in seamlessly. He rooms with Brian Brise, who's an East Coast kid from Maryland, who also yeah. isn't like a South Carolina boy either. But I mean, those two have become really good friends. And that's, they're only in their second year, but they're already taking leadership positions on the offensive side and defensive side of the ball. So I think at Clemson, you know, if you put the work in the practice field and you want to be there and you buy into the culture, then there's going to be a spot for you and you're going to be welcomed. And um, I wouldn't say it's, there's no kind of glitches in the system because that's impossible. But I do think it's just, it's still very much a well-oiled machine in that regard. Because Deshaun's from Georgia, Trevor's from Georgia. Like I feel like Christian Wilkins had one Krispy Kreme donut and he was like, I'm from here now. Like I'm from the Carolinas. <laughs> like, like there's, it's just, it, I was, I was just think, starting to think about it. Cause you're right. Those are the leaders. Like the leaders of this team right now are sophomores. And one of them's yeah. uh, from the mid Atlantic. One of them's from the West coast. Uh, I will but, say that Clemson being able to the sixth year has been huge because you get a guy like Nolan Turner who's back. I mean, he's he's someone that's not Skowski. exactly neither is Skowski. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you have those guys, some of the on the offensive line that um, have kind of been staples of the program, and they're they're crucial in how Clemson kind of develops their players because they say the best leaders are not necessarily the coaches but the players, and um, Clemson really buys into that. Uh, nuts and bolts time. Take me inside the secondary. Uh, where are your concerns? Where are some of the names that you're excited about? I think secondary as a whole has a few question marks, um, especially with the dismissal of Darren Kendrick, who Rusty Menzel of our Georgia site reported this week that there's a good chance charges could be dropped. And he could be in, end up in Athens before the summer's over, which means Clemson could see him on the other side of the ball September 4th. So that's a little side note. But without him, Clemson is not necessarily – bringing back a ton of tested, experienced corners. You have Sheridan Jones, Andrew Booth, a couple of younger guys, um, but they're kind of putting the emphasis this summer on those guys really stepping up and maybe taking ownership of a starting role. Talent is there, good depth is there, but you want to see kind of that alpha, whether it was AJ Terrell or Trayvon Mullen, you want, you're not quite sure who's going to fill that role this year at corner. Should it be Booth? Wasn't he a five-star? It yeah. should. And now, you know, they say he had a good consistent spring. He's been healthy. Now they just need him to make those flashy one-handed insane interceptions and still do that, but also recognize the depth you know, just, just play, do the, there were the easier things right on a more consistent basis. So we'll see if that comes to fruition and that safety. I think there's more question marks. So Nolan didn't take any live reps this spring. Landon Zanders who started last year was injured all spring. So you had a, the, the silver lining there is you had a bunch of younger players getting all of the reps, but from our, my point of view, I don't know if anyone kind of came out of spring ball just wowing the coaches, just being like, all right, you're our third guy, or you're even our second guy behind Nolan. That to me is a little bit more of a question mark. And Venables moves his guys around on the back end so much. So depending on who, you know, down in distance and who's in at nickel Sam 
uh, where Trenton Simpson will play the freshman last year. And then you have Malcolm Green, who was a freshman last year that kind of exploded on the scene and they expect big things from him. So Venables will toy with all sorts of different combinations. But part of that is because you don't just have an Isaiah Simmons right now that you can just plug in and say, do this, do this, and he can do it easily no matter what the task is. So I do think safety will kind of be filled by committee approach and to be determined whether that'll be a strength or a weakness. But I mean, defensive line is set and like the best Clemson defenses that we've seen under Brent Venables start up four and then allow him to have all the creativity with everything behind it. Right. And this is what probably Elliot, I mean, Venables and Sweeney emphasized the most this spring is we've got to get a more consistent disruptive pass rush. We've got to get more pressure because that's why Clemson was so good in 18 and years past. I mean, it was that defensive line. And especially when you have a secondary where there's some question marks, you really can't allow that quarterback to have a ton of room to pick you apart. I mean, you see what happened against Ohio State. So I think they are excited about having a healthy Tyler Davis. He was injured, having a year two Brian Brise, having Miles Murphy in year two. You have Justin Foster deciding to come back. He didn't play at all last year. KJ Henry, you have, I mean, you have depth. On paper, there. it's sick. Yeah, like you look at it and you right. say, this should, this should all click, but you don't always get a uh, fully healthy uh, Tyler Davis and, you know, right. Xavier Thomas is hit and miss kind of right. same with KJ right. Henry. Like it, yeah. everyone is playing their best football at the best right. time. Then we're talking about like those, like a 2016 or 2018 kind of defensive line. Right. And you just, I think you can count on that interior pressure. You just need those ends outside of miles Murphy to make some noise and make some waves and get after the quarterback. And that I think is where it yet to be determined. Um, after a run of, uh, some on-campus non-conference games. How do you feel about the neutral, the Georgia? Oh, I'm pumped. Because you get Cause to I'm, I, I live in Charlotte. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, I can I can walk to Bank of America if I really needed to. Um, no, I think that's going to be awesome, especially with I think it was announced this week or that the Panthers will be full capacity this year. So that means Clemson, Georgia should in theory be full capacity. Um, I mean, I just can't imagine there's going to be. Clemson and Georgia fans just chomping at the bit to be in a full stadium. And um, that ticket will probably be pretty high price. But uh, you, have you, do you have a pick yet? Have y'all already had to sit down and start making a projection? Because you know the, the line came out this week from like three, something. Three four. Yeah, about three, three and a half, four, somewhere in there. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I, I need to probably sit down and study Georgia a little bit more. I know they've had some issues uh, filling some spots in the secondary, but. Um, I don't know. I think the opener, that, that's going to be tough regardless. You just don't know. What's your best read on the Bubba Chandler situation or best guess? Or even Will Taylor. I mean, both of them right now could potentially just not go to the college route and go straight to the MLB. I think both of them are pretty set on playing college ball unless there's just an, something that they just can't absolutely turn down in terms of MLB money. Um, that puts Clemson in a real bind, though, because as we know, Puma Shaw is out with an Achilles. So um, you're looking at pretty thin depth at quarterback, if that's the case. I mean, behind DJ, I mean, if he gets hurt, those are, those are some, could be some pretty dire situations. So I don't know whether Clemson continues to look at the options at the transfer portal. I know they have kept their options open there, but do you want to bring someone in? knowing they're going to ride the bench a lot of these quarterbacks are in the portal are in the portal because they want to go compete for a starting job, you know, and that's just not going to be the case at Clemson. You just need another body back there. Um, the running back position. How do you think that ends up shaking out? Because uh, Lynn J Dixon could be the, the starter, but there's also a lot of talented options uh, to be able to get in there, whether it's like a Will Shipley or a Kobe Pace or someone like that. Do you think it, how do you think that ends up breaking down? Because Travis Etienne's really shouldered a huge load of this running game for a long time. If you had to ask me to name one breakout player on the whole team this year, right now, based on spring returns, I would say Kobe Pace. Mm -hmm. um, I just love what they saw from him this spring. Part of that may be just trying to encourage him or maybe Motiv like using us to motivate him. Yes, no way. I would never, would never do that. Or, you know, motivate Lynn J. Dixon or Phil Moff or kind of that whole running back room. Cause it's CJ Spiller, the first year running backs coach, he's got a lot of bodies to work with. I think he's got six, six scholarship guys. So um, just the competition is fueling that room right now. So I do think it'll be more of a by committee approach than we've seen in the past with Travis, but Phil Moffa is a talented guy in his own right. 
Um, it'll be interesting to see what Elliot does with Will Shipley and how he gets, you know, you'll, you'll want to try to get him his fair share of touches. Just get him um, the ball in open space on like a little corner, just like one little angle he, route or something like that. Game, yeah. Um, and he's more powerful than he looks. So um, I think they'll have their options there. But when it comes to be crunch time, who are you going to give the ball to? That's kind of yet to be determined. But I think Kobe Pace really could be that guy. When it comes to be crunch time, who gets the ball at the wide receiver position? Oh, man, that is a good question. I mean, if Justin Ross gets the okay, it, how I don't, and he, I don't know how it won't be him. And for people who don't know, he has his final doctor's appointment in June. So that's coming up. And that's when he gets the, you know, hopefully he gets cleared to say, yeah, you can go do everything, contact all the above, which means in fall camp he could scrimmage, which would be a huge deal. Um, but kind of outside of that, you know, you're still looking at Joe and Goddard to kind of have that breakout year be healthy saying with Frank Lawson he was Frank, Frank Lawson he was dealing with injuries if EJ Williams in his second year a Joe and no, Joe, Joe I know he had a really good spring uh especially spring game and he just brings kind of a different so uh, you keep going no 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 fin finish that thought we had to set the timer <laughs> sorry didn't and, mean yeah, to uh, two Collins twins the freshmen um they might be they might add something to the mix too Bo Collins and Dakari Collins one of them Wait, hold on. Let me get this right. Bo Collins is uh, the high school teammate of DJ. Correct. Yeah. Yakari's yeah. from Georgia, California, Correct. Yeah. Georgia. The, and what the about Collins the other player. person is Troy Salato. He'll be a kind of a slot guy, but he doesn't arrive till June. So I don't know how much he'll be involved. Incredible. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Very fun edition of Around the Clock. She is Anna Hickey. You can follow her on Twitter at Anna H247. I will say it again. No one has a better handle on this Clemson roster and everything that's going through it. Uh, I I thank you for sharing some of your expertise with us here on the Cover Three Podcast. Thanks, Chip. Always always love being on the Cover Three Podcast because I listen to it all the time. So it's pretty cool when I get to actually be on it. <laughs> thanks for the downloads. <laughs> yeah, thanks.